All right, welcome. Uh, my name is Jill Davy, and I'm a Dharma teacher with True North Insight, and I'm really happy to share some practices and teachings that um, I'm finding very inspiring and are very important. Uh, yeah, so I'm doing a course right now with a teacher named Shyla Catherine, and she's written two books and is well-known, well-renowned teacher um, and lots of experience and training with meditation masters. And uh, she teaches primarily on what are called concentration practices or jhana practice. J-H-A-N-A. -A. And <clears throat> so the course I'm doing is an introduction really to Jhana. And uh, so if you're watching this on YouTube, the links to her books and her courses um, and the meditation center that she, uh, what's the word? Um, can't quite think of the word, but like she was one of the founders. There it is, founders of. <laughs> um, so I'll share her links down below and really um, honor and respect and highly recommend her courses if you're interested in these practices of deeper concentration states um, that are called jhanas. Um, so tonight I wanted to talk about, um, in Pali, uh, it's called Vitaka. I should have put that in the chat here for our, our Zoom. So if you're wanting to know these words, it's V-I-T-A-K-K-A, -A, Vitaka. And <clears throat> it's uh, it, it means aiming and directing the attention aiming and directing attention, or we could say aiming and applying attention. Um, it, it's traditionally called aiming and directing. And um, it is one of the beginning practices and aspects that can lead to concentration states. However, it is not solely for that because all day long, we're aiming and directing our attention. And in just in mindfulness, I don't mean just mindfulness, but in mindfulness, in Vipassana, which we, we're practicing here tonight, um, and concentration states are another category of meditation. Um, this is used in all of those practices and and just in daily life we're we're always attending to something with one of our sense doors and directing our attention to it and um in the in the teachings it's likened to uh, a, a bell with a striker and you know it doesn't work as a as a bell as a resounding sound if we don't aim it if we're missing it it doesn't do what we're intending so we need to aim and direct aim and apply you know to have the desired uh, awareness so we aim it and then apply um, and so as I was saying, it, it is a factor for mindfulness, for daily life, hopefully you're aiming and applying, directing your attention when you're driving, when you're um, eating, when you're having a conversation, you know, uh, when you're listening for important sounds, etc. And um, so we've talked about before how 
we experience our world, this world, this life experience through our sense doors. In meditation, it's considered that we have six sense doors. Some of us may be only familiar with usually referred to five sense doors of seeing, tasting, hearing, smelling, touching, seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, touching, five. And um, in meditation, the mind is also considered a sense door. So there's six sense doors. And through these sense organs or sense doors, as they're called traditionally, um, this is how we experience our world. So in any given moment, all of those six sense doors are receiving information, vast amounts of information, way more than we can be aware of um, in our normal consciousness. And so to function, I mean, if we, that could be so overwhelming. So to function and we need to filter out and all day long, we're filtering out most of the information so that we can pay attention to one thing. Hopefully we're paying attention to the person we're listening to or um, the food we're tasting or the sights we're seeing when we're in nature or wherever we are, you know, so that to notice how already you're doing this. You already know how to do, cultivate Vitaka, applying and directing, aiming and directing our attention and filtering out other aspects that are that doesn't sound right, superfluous, but that are not the primary anchor for the attention in any given moment. <clears throat> Another thing we do, as well as filtering out other sense impressions, is that this aiming and applying of our attention also screens out thoughts of past and future. It's very much present moment attending to what is actually happening. And uh, I imagine many of us would find this helpful to cultivate a little more of, you know, how much of our day and attention is consumed with thoughts of what's already happened and thoughts of what we think is going to happen. If you pay attention to the mind states, you might notice it is predominantly moving into past and future, um, unless you've really cultivated a lot of present moment mindfulness. Um, this factor of mindfulness or concentration, depending on how it's been being applied and cultivated, counters the hindrance of sloth and torpor and dullness. So many of us notice a tendency in our meditation or in our life to just have a really, you know, even if you know you've gotten a good sleep and you've had some nutrition and, you know, you're fairly energetically rested, but still when you try to pay attention to something, could be to your art, to your music, to whatever you're paying attention to or your meditation object, then there's a lot of sleepiness or just can't, can't stay attentive with it for very long. The, the bob and weave is happening and um, where there's just a the attention just keeps slipping off and kind of into dreaminess or 
it's hard to even describe it sometimes because there's so much dullness. And so this factor of Vitaka counters that hindrance. Um, so this may be something that's really helpful for you to cultivate if that's something that you struggle with. Um, yeah. So, and next week we're gonna develop this more and talk about its companion. So um, if you're not able to be here next week, check out the recording for that because they, they, these two um, factors really work together, Vitaka and Vachara. So we'll talk about that next week. But tonight, like to um, practice a way of um, cultivating this quality of directing and applying our attention. Uh, so through this partially guided and silent meditation, I'll be inviting you to all of us, including myself, to direct our attention to different things and just notice how, how we can do that. And in particular, notice how much effort it takes or in fact, how little effort it takes. You don't have to work hard and strain and like get on that, you know, I'm gonna pay attention to my foot. Oh, where's my foot? Feel my foot and like give yourself a headache trying to feel your foot. It really is a pretty light amount of effort to just let the attention gather to whatever object we're gonna be moving to as if it's kind of a magnet there that's just gently pulling the attention and the interest and the curiosity and checking it out. And then we'll move to another anchor. Okay, so that's what we're going to practice tonight. All right, so uh, get yourself comfy for your practice. I'm going to, um, the sweater's a bit hot. I'm going to change that. So you can, um, since this is a practice of awakening and is countering sloth and torpor, it might not be best to practice laying down. But if you're in a lot of pain and need to lay down for your practice, you could raise up your forearm so that it will fall if you're falling asleep and help you begin again. And <clears throat> So finding a posture that is wakeful, but um, easeful as well, so that you're not over efforting or creating any strain. Some people like to practice standing or walking, that's fine as well. You can turn away from the computer if you've been on screens a lot or dim your lights if that helps to comfort the eyes. And before we begin this practice of aiming and directing our attention or applying our attention we're just going to meet the body here. So you might like to take, is there any movements that you need to release any tension? Are there any sighing breaths that would be helpful for you to relax or release anything that's not needed right now? See what position for your eyes is most 
supportive for your practice tonight? Is it helpful for you to close your eyes, relaxing your forehead and eye muscles? Or some find it helpful to practice with the eyes slightly open, especially if there's sleepiness for you at this time. You might like the eyes slightly open to bring in some light. In whichever position the eyes are in, we want to relax the forehead and the eyelids rest downward. The muscles of the face relaxing, the bones heavy. Shoulder bones heavy. The weight of the shoulders sliding down through the elbows into relaxed hands. See if there's any muscles of the inner layers of the belly that could relax. And feel the firmness, the uprightness of the spine and the weightedness of the pelvis. These two directions. Grounded and upright. And now we'll begin to bring some intention to where we are applying our awareness. So noticing any sounds that are in your environment, in your close environment, perhaps in the room, you can hear the sound of my voice. There may be other sounds from the computer or heater or from the body. And now take your time, very little effort. Just let the attention move towards your hands. You see, it doesn't take a lot of effort to just feel where your hands are resting and any sensations in your hands.
And now bring some aiming and directing of the attention to feel your nose. And then opening the awareness and applying the attention to notice sounds from further outside of your room or space. You may be able to hear some sounds from outside or other parts of your home. Notice if you're holding any tension or applying too much effort. And see if you can just bring some, some ease to noticing now how you direct your attention to your feet. Feeling whatever sensations are available in the feet in whatever posture they're in in their stillness right now. And now trying one that may be a little more subtle because there's less nerve endings or sensation there, but just check it out. Is it, how much is available? Can you direct your attention just to the area of your left elbow, inner or outer whole elbow? And notice as we do these, we're excluding so many other aspects of input, filtering out and just attending to one area. And now we'll aim and apply attention to the mind. What mind states are here when we 
Just turn our awareness towards the mind. Is there wanting or not wanting or sleepiness or fantasizing or perhaps there's an absence of those things. Perhaps the mind is, has some degree of calm or ease, presence, not applying any judgment to it, just turning towards the mind itself. If you're noticing sleepiness or dullness, drowsiness, think of that striker hitting the bell. So there's a directing of attention and applying the attention. So we can really turn up the attention to what we're aiming at. So our last anchor now for this practice tonight is going to be the breath. You may already have a place where you practice mindfulness of breathing. If not, just choose where you most easily feel the sensation of breath right now. Might be the movement of the belly or the chest or the passage of air at the nostrils. And for the remainder of this practice, we're just going to stay here now. We're gonna continue aiming and applying just to the breath. filtering out other distractions. When our attention moves away, as it will at some point, we return to the breath, striking the bell again. With each breath, you may need to feel as if you're aiming the striker at the bell and hitting the, striking the bell, aiming your attention at the breath and meeting the breath. Without extra tension or strain, and without judgment.
Training the mind to pay attention to what we're choosing to pay attention to, not just what the habit mind likes to drift into. In these last few moments, I'm going to ring the bell three times. And we're introducing here the, the next aspect, aspect of attention, vichara, which is sustaining the attention. So the striking of the bell is the vitaka. Notice that. And as the sound continues, let the awareness linger, stay, rub, attend to the whole vibration of the bell until it ends. So I wanted to briefly mention this sutta uh, for those who you, you don't need to read suttas or even know what that means, but some, some folks are interested in the written teachings um, that we, uh, from the Buddha that, uh, that, we've, that we uh, study. And uh, so if you do, this is in the middle length discourses the Majjhima Nikaya it's called and it's uh, Sutta number 32 if you're interested and this little section is on page 310 um, but it's a it's um, it's a teacher Sariputta is their name and they're they're giving um, it's a it's quite a, a longer teaching or discourse but there's this one section here uh, that Shaila Catherine pointed out that I really appreciate. Um, an example of how someone, they, they say, wield, um, does not let the mind control them. That um, one learns how to wield mastery, as they use the word mastery, over the mind. Uh, so it's said this way. 
in the morning one abides in whatever abiding or attainment one wants to abide in during the morning. At midday one abides in whatever abiding or attainment uh, one wants to abide in at midday. So, uh, and in the evening the same abiding in whatever attainment one wants to abide in during the evening. So attainment here is referring to these um, meditative states so or mind states and then they give this example like a simile or uh, an example of suppose a king or a king's minister uh, let's add in queen here <laughs> had a chest full of variously colored garments and in the morning she could put on whatever pair of garments she wanted to put on in the morning at midday one could put on whatever pair of garments one wanted to put on at midday and in the evening he could put on whatever pair of garments he wanted to put on in the evening so too we can learn to wield mastery over the mind in the morning midday or evening so just like changing our clothes through the day we could also decide what we want to attend to so to look at what would, you know, the the uh, homework this week is to to notice what are we aiming and applying our attention to through the day. Uh, that it you just practice, you can see how you can choose what you pay attention to. You directed your attention here, there, wide, close. Uh, subtle, gross. So we know we do this all day long and we know we can train ourselves to do this in a particular way. So if we find that we're really um, kind of at the mercy of our mind, like I can't stop my mind, it's uh, I can't, you know, I'm just going over this stuff so much or worrying about this so much. You, you just practiced how you can direct your attention. So they, um, we can take this on as a practice to just check in with ourselves. Hmm, what am I paying attention to? So it's not going to be easy to remember that. And, and as uh, someone in our community before the recording was, was saying how helpful it is to make a reminder if this is something you want to check out for yourself, you need to make some reminders for yourself to, it could be a little mindfulness bell um, that you put, you know, on your phone or whatever you use, uh, a little ping, like, and then just check in, hey, what am I paying attention to? Is it conducive to ease, to calm, to wisdom, to generosity, or is it fueling aversion and fueling desire. We'll check it out. Okay, so uh, if you joined us here on the YouTube recording, thank you. I'll put Catherine's links down below to her books and her site and courses. And next week will, is a very important part. This is just like the beginning aim and direct attention. Next week will be more about sustaining the attention on the object. So um, check that one out on the YouTube channel or join us on the, uh, on the Zoom if you're able to. Thanks for dropping in.